so happy dags and happy teammates. There's a lot of different ways to make this happen, but I'm specifically going to talk about how a little bit of CICD can go a long way when it relates to airflow. Uh, but first, I am Leah, as Brian said. I am a developer relations engineer at Google Cloud, and this means that I am a software engineer by trade, but instead of using my skills to build the end Google Cloud product, I use them to build things that make it easier for other software engineers to use Google Cloud. My day-to-day -day is wildly varying, but it involves things like sample code, tutorials, blog posts, and sometimes talks like this one. I specifically focus on Cloud Composer, which is Google's hosted managed version of Airflow. My talk today is a little bit Composer-centric, but you can translate pretty much every aspect of it to your version of Airflow. And if you want to talk about how you would do that afterwards, please come see me and we could brainstorm it together. I am also an Airflow committer, and I've been involved in the project since 2018, which was when I started at Google, and I am an organizer for the summit overall. So on behalf of the other organizers, and I thank you for being here in real life and around the world. This is so exciting. This is the first time we've actually gotten to do this with any semblance of in-person, and it's pretty cool. And a fun fact about me, I love yarn crafts and my cats, Millie and Frank, and once I'm done with my talk, I will be making a sweater over there. Okay, so if you're uh, around the world or if you're in the room, this is gonna be like a very cheesy raise your hand exercise. So raise your hand if you've ever had a DAG that worked locally, but not when you deployed it to Airflow. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Uh, if you've ever lost track of what you've tried to do to make a DAG work when it's not working, Yep, mm -hmm, same. Uh, if you've ever just like seen the broken DAG error in the Airflow UI. Yep, yep, important stepping stone. And um, if you realize that you like finally got that DAG working on your machine and then you kind of forgot to deploy it to Airflow afterwards. Yeah, I have done all of them and embarrassingly more than once, but I do have potential fixes for all of these that we'll talk about today. Okay, so this is situations where I'd say you had unhappy DAGs. You were probably unhappy and if you work in a shared team environment, you might be unhappy too. So the fixes will hopefully get you to the point where using Airflow is at least a little bit happier. Maybe it's even the um, smiley face uh, we did on the New York exercise here at the beginning, the icebreaker. All right, so that first scenario, you have a DAG that's working on your machine. The classic, it works on my machine problem. <sighs> This is kind of common in Airflow, and in my opinion, it happens for a few reasons. Airflow has a lot of complex configurations. It has, configu uh, it has connections to all kinds of data sources and data syncs, and you have to manage permissions for who can and can't access your Airflow environment and what the Airflow environment itself can and can't access. So like, there's a lot of places where this can go wrong. My proposal here is to have more than one Airflow environment. So this is with the caveat that um, however many you have is however many you have to manage. So keep that in mind. And I generally propose having two Airflow environments that are deployed in addition to whatever you're doing locally. So let's talk about what that could look like. You have your local development environment. This is using something like our community made Airflow Breeze or something similar. You do all your DAG development on your computer. You get to figure out like all of your syntax errors, like this is your safe sandbox of experimentation, which you can break as much or as often as you need to because you can always recreate and start over. So once you're past that and your DAG is working locally, you're happy, we have your development environment or your dev environment. This is where you can deploy your DAGs when you're getting ready to try out the next step. The dev environment should be as close to your production environment as possible without like connecting to your production data sources. This is where you can debug your DAGs because it has like identi identical configuration to the production environment, but connected to different data sources, identical permissions, same versions of the Python packages, and most importantly, the same version of Airflow. You definitely want those to agree. This is also a good place where you can try out new configurations to the environment itself. Did a new Python package get released that you want to use with your DAGs? Try it out in the dev environment before you try it out in your production situation. And this may seem super obvious to some of you, but for those who are just setting it up for the first time, it might not be. And it's just a good reminder, good practice, try it on dev before you put it in prod. Now, once your DAG is working and is happy and you and your teammates are happy, you will be looking at your production environment. This is your like tightly guarded, most special sacred airflow environment 
and you should really have the best engineering practices as possible with it. You should be doing things like practicing the principle of least privilege. Be really mindful of who has access to it and when. Keep in mind when you are deploying new DAGs to this environment. If there is a time of day that's like the least awful time for something to go wrong and you have a DAG that might cause issues, that's the time we should be deploying it, the least awful time. You should also always have a rollback plan in place because technology is technology and humans are humans. And when you put them together, stuff can happen and it's better to have a rollback plan instead of assuming nothing is going to happen. Okay, so now we're a little bit happier because we have our solution, our multiple airflow environments. What about the losing track of what you have and haven't tried to make your DAG work? Like you have the broken pipeline or like your DAG broke all of a sudden and you kind of remember happened a few months ago, but you don't remember what you tried to fix it or you inherited a DAG from someone who's not here anymore and you have no idea what they were thinking in all of those positions too. And the thing that makes them a little bit better, again, sounds kind of obvious, but it might not be, is using version control. I mean, we do version control for other types of production code and software engineering because we want to know what were the changes that were made, who made them, when were they made, and why. And version control can help you figure out at least some semblance of clues around that. So it to me, it feels like info you would want to know about your DAGs as well. I don't think they should be treated any differently than any other production code you might have. Even, even, even if you're working by yourself, which I work by myself a lot of the time. And let me tell you, using version control, my future self thanks me every time. So I'm going to walk through two flows. One, if you're the only person doing airflow for your team, and the other, if you are in a team environment. The solo flow is pretty basic. Make a commit and give it a detailed message that's more than just changed something or tried to make it work. I've used those, but don't. Your future self won't like that. And then push your changes to a branch. And if you're in a team environment, make that commit with the detailed good message that your future self or future teammates will thank you for. Push to your branch, open a pull request, have someone review it, and merge those changes into your main branch. Okay, so we're happy because we know where your DAGs have been and where they're going, and we have those multiple environments. Let's talk about that big red broken DAG error. Obviously the answer is to just fix your DAG, but maybe we wanna prevent it from happening as frequently in the first place. So this is what Brian talked about when we did a little bit of an icebreaker at the New York meetup as one of his least favorite things about Airflow is testing it. And that's because there's like a million different ways to do it. I'm not going to give you the immediate answer of this is the best way to do it because the answer usually has to do with your organization, what your risk tolerance is, and what your DAGs have going on. But I am going to send you away with some resources for how you can figure that out. You can consider using the Airflow CLI. This is good for figuring out syntax errors and task errors. You can consider using unit tests. You can use these to figure out, is your DAG valid? Does it have any cycles? Or if you have any custom hooks or operators or any other kinds of classes in your code, having unit tests is a great idea for this. You can run the DAGs in your local environment that we talked about in step one. And if they're working there, you can also validate them in your development environment. And doing any combination of these, even if it's just one of them, is definitely going to reduce the number of times you see that big red broken DAG error. Can't promise it's gonna go away all together, but hopefully it will be not as frequent of an occurrence. These slides are gonna be made available afterwards, and I also have links to a bunch of resources from Google, from Astronomer, in the community docs, and from past Airflow events that go in depth and to a few more approaches for how to handle testing. Okay, so finally, we're happy, we've made those changes, we fixed our DAG, and we figure out a few days later, we forgot to push it into our environment. Last year, I gave a talk at the Airflow Summit and it's called Robots Are Your Friends, and I stand by that statement. If there ever were a case for some automation, some bots, this is it. Why rely on a human to push those changes when you could have something else do it more reliably and consistently? So with tools like Google Cloud Build or like GitHub Actions, you can make sure that as soon as those changes to your DAGs get pushed to source control or at some kind of regular interval, those changes get pushed into your dev airflow environment. I do not recommend using automation to promote those DAGs to your production environment. I believe it is safer to have there be a human do the final step of validation, um, but that's my personal risk tolerance. Your org may feel differently and that is awesome. So if we put it all together, a flow would look something like this. We have 
me opening a pull request because I made a change to my DAG. And then there is some automation in Cloud Build that runs like some unit tests, let's say. My teammate looks at it and says, okay, this changes look good and my tests are passing. So we merge the DAG into our main branch. The DAGs then get copied into my development environment and I can take a look and see, does the DAG fail? Oh my gosh. And then if it does, I fix it and I do that PR flow again. But if it passes, then I can manually put it in production when it makes sense to do so. So looking at this architecture diagram, the four things we talked about, I have multiple airflow environments. I have version control in place. I have DAG testing going on both in the form of unit tests and in validation in my development environment. And I have automation both for running the tests themselves and for copying the DAGs into my development environment. So if we could, we're gonna watch a quick demo of it in action with a repo that I have. And this repo has some DAGs in it and some unit tests and a utility to help me with that. Um, so Chris is gonna help me switch it over. So yeah, this repo has DAGs in a DAGs folder um, and some other utilities and this is my Cloud Composer environment. This is my dev environment. This is the Airflow UI. I'm going to make a change to this DAG. I'm going to add a single comment to it. Super boring change. Here I'm showing you it was updated at like 3.20 p.m. on that day. I'm going to use the GitHub UI where I will make a change, a boring change of adding a test comment. And I will open up a pull request instead of committing to my branch. I will add a detailed commit message for my future self. And once I open that pull request, it's going to trigger automated unit testing. And I'm using Cloud Build because I work at Google, but I know it works with GitHub automation and other tools as well. So this is the Cloud Build UI. I can see my build steps, which install the requirements and run PyTest. My test file here checks for DAG validity and looks for cycles. And the DAG is valid and doesn't have cycles, so I pretend to be my own teammate reviewing and merging as by myself, otherwise I'd have someone else review it. And this should kick off my other cloud build job, which will copy my DAGs into my development Airflow Composer environment. So this runs a Python script and all of the Python script does is look to see, oh, where changes made in the DAGs folder. Cool, I'm gonna copy them to my Airflow environment. And that will take a few seconds. And once that happens, we can see this is the cloud storage bucket where the DAGs are stored. The update time is now later than when we started. And if I, Refresh one more time. We can see that my test comment is there. So that's putting it all together. And we can go back to the presentation, Chris. Thank you. All right. Um, so I have some links available here. There's the rest of the Airflow Summit program. These slides are available. I know it says February 2020. I gave this talk in February 2022. I gave the talk in February and the slides are the same. And then this is a link to a tutorial that breaks down these steps in much more detail. As I said, it's a little bit of a Cloud Composer focus, but I would love to talk to you to figure out how to adapt it to your use case.